Thank you, everybody. I'm delighted to come here today and tell you very quickly a little bit about the James Webb Space Telescope and the current mission status. So to introduce the mission, what is it? It will be the largest and most ambitious space telescope ever launched. It has a six and a half meter primary mirror, a deployable sun shield that cools the entire observatory to 40 Kelvin, and it will be operating at L2 on the far side of the sun earth moon system. So what JWST gives us is a big infrared telescope in space, this has never been done before, and it will open up, really open up a whole new view of the universe. So to do that science, the telescope is equipped with four scientific instruments, of which the one where I've led the European team, Miri, is one of those four instruments. You can see in, in the picture, the instruments all wrapped in um, nice MLI blankets for thermal insulation and where they're located at the back of the primary mirror. The instruments comprise the full suite of techniques astronomers want to use to study the universe, from cameras to take images, spectrographs to analyze the light in a lot of detail, and also coronagraphs, which are especially developed for the study of exoplanets, planets orbiting other stars. So I mentioned um, that I lead the, the MIRI instrument. This has been a major UK contribution to the instrument. It has been led by, um, created by a nationally funded European consortium in a 50-50 partnership with the USA. So this was additional natural national contributions to build this instrument beyond our membership of ESA. It's the only mid-infrared instrument on the mission. And so we have packed into it as much optics as we possibly can in order to address a lot of really key science with the mission. And it brings a lot of technical challenges to do this because in order to observe in the mid-infrared, the entire instrument has to be cooled 30 de 33 degrees colder than the rest of JWST. So we are equipped with a, a cryo cooler developed at JPL, which brings the entire operating temperature down to seven Kelvin. And you can see um, some of our packed in optics of our spectrograph. So thinking about science, I mentioned that JWST it's an observatory as much as it is a mission. So it is designed to address science from the solar system all the way to searching for the first galaxies. And time with this observatory is awarded to the best scientific proposals by international, con con international competition. So it's equipped with a broad diversity of instruments and observing modes available to be, like Hubble, a fully functioning international observatory in space. So to highlight a couple of key scientific questions that we will start addressing almost as soon as we can. Um, one is the study of exoplanets. In astronomy, I think the problem now is not to find exoplanets, it's to understand exoplanets. So to characterize the ones we already know about, to look for planets of lower mass, so limited by the capabilities of the telescopes we have at the moment, most of the exoplanets that have been found are that large, they're like the gas giants. They're not small rocky planets. They are large, gase, potentially gaseous or icy planets, very different from what we see in our solar system. So we want to look for lower mass ones. And absolutely critical to this is the use of spectroscopy to study the atmospheric compositions of the planets and understand exactly what the chemistry of those planets is and to understand how the planets are forming in protoplanetary disks. So which types of disks form which types of planets is a, is a fundamental question that we will be able to answer with JWST. And at the other scale, really, how do galaxies form and evolve? And especially when, 
So JWST will have the power to search for the first stars and galaxies that were formed after the Big Bang 13 and a half billion years ago. So the image that you can see, this is the Hubble deep field. This is our most sensitive, deepest image of a tiny, tiny patch of sky with tens of thousands of galaxies in it. All of those tiny red dots you can see are fully formed galaxies and they are not the first galaxies and stars. So with JWST, we will be looking for the first galaxies and stars, but we also, again, spectroscopy is super important in taking this science forward because what we want to be able to do is study how the composition of the stars and how the galaxies are made up all the way from those very first ones to our Milky Way in, in our in our neighborhood and put together the entire picture of the evolution of galaxies and quasars and dust all the way back to the very first stars and galaxies. So this is a really exciting and challenging mission scientifically. So, and the UK has had a very broad and wide participation in the mission from early development studies of technologies for it. I've already talked about our major contribution being um, the construction of the MIRI instrument and the science that it will do. So while there are four instruments on JWST, more than 30% of the first science will make use of MIRI. We've had industry in the UK having, industry and academia actually in the UK having subcontracts from other industrial partners in the mission. Um, we had two scientists elected by ESA to the NERSPEC science team, the other major European contribution to the mission. And we have massive amounts of telescope time in the first year of JWST operations. So of the 286 proposals that were actually awarded time to use the observatory in its first cycle of observations, nearly half of them have a UK scientist involved in a leadership role. So the map is showing you the distribution of that engagement with JWST in the UK across the community. It is extremely well designed for addressing key science that the UK astronomy community is working on and enthused about taking forward. And to put alongside that and the, and the sort of nationwide engagement in the mission, we have developed, um, STFC and the UK Space Agency together have developed a nationwide public engagement and education campaign. And the different colored markers are showing you the scientists, the people that have been involved in building Mary, and also the distribution of the science centers and strategic partners for the public engagement campaign. And I think this is an enormously inspiring mission. I'll talk about the inspiring technology in a minute. So it's really important that we make use of it in our schools um, to and, and with the public to inspire everyone about science and build STEM skills. So this has been a strategic campaign that has linked partner public engagement specialists as partner organizations with scientists across the UK. So those partners have developed the resources and the training that is tuned to our school curricula. So we've got primary school classroom resource, we've got a secondary school engineering challenge that was developed with the IET, we've got a data project that was developed with the Institute for Research in Schools, there are STEM club resources for both primary and secondary schools, infrared cameras and demos, and also the training in how to use the resources. So um, lots of professional development for teachers around using this in the classrooms to address um, key aspects of, of the curriculum um, and supporting materials. We've also engaged with the more informal educational um, aspects of science centers, planetarias, amateur astronomy societies. The net result of all of this is that together the campaign has so far reached more than 4,000 schools and 100,000 students and this is I think this is showing the power of the strategic partnerships um, and they're building connections with the scientists in their local areas and with each other and sharing resources and learning together. I think um, this is a really um, excellent campaign. The picture showing you some of the um, activities for a half term that were run in science centres all around the UK this year. 
So the mission status, we are on our way to L2. Uh, the picture on the um, left shows you the J JWST observatory. It is so big with its six and a half meter primary mirror and a sunshade the size of a tennis court that it has to be folded up to fit into the launch vehicle. It will be launched in Ariane 5. You can see um, we really have um, our rocket now because they're putting the logo on it and doing the final finishing touches. The spacecraft at the moment is being fueled, so we are getting ready to go. The target launch date is the 22nd of December 2021. I think this is what we are all waiting for. And I think all of the people that have been reached by the public engagement campaign will be waiting with the scientists in the UK for this launch. But that is not the end of it. So after the launch, there are 50 major deployments involving thousands of mechanisms that have to happen correctly and in sequence in order to create the JWST observatory. So I have a very quick summary here for you. After 33 minutes, which is roughly, I think, when the handover between um, the rocket, we've separated from the rocket and we'll be handed over to the Mission Operations Centre in, in Baltimore, the solar, the solar arrays deploy. Three days later, the unfolding of the observatory begins. Five days after that, the picture is showing you the covers that have been protecting the sunshade start to be pulled back. And then there is a long sequence of several days that it takes to deploy the sunshade and tension it correctly. After 10 days, the secondary mirror will be deployed and latched into position. And then it takes another 10 days to deploy the primary mirror. This isn't just that those folded back side of the mirror have to come into place. Every single one of those 18 mirror segments that make up the primary mirror have latches on them during launch to protect them. So all of the latches have to be unlocked and we have to check that we can actually move each mirror segment independently. So by day 29, we're at L2 and the sunshade is deployed and it is starting to cool the telescope. At that point, um, there's a whole long process to align, align those mirrors. They have to be positioned with an accuracy better than the width of a human hair in order to create a single six and a half minute, meter diameter mirror surface. And of course, commissioning the instruments. Uh, even after um, 29 days on the edge, I will still be on the edge because there's a very key, key milestone for the MIRI instrument, which is around something like 80 to 90 days. That is when the MIRI cooler starts the process of bringing MIRI down to its operating temperature and cooling us. So um, what we call the commissioning period, testing out the instruments and making sure that the images are as we expect them to be, that takes um, until around the end of June. So sometime in June, July, next year, the first data will be publicly released from the mission and the start of the first year of normal observatory operations will begin in July and August next year. And with that, I would just like to say, I've only given you a very quick summary. Um, if you would like to learn more about the mission, I would strongly recommend hearing the series of talks that have been organized all around the UK as part of the public education campaign. They're all suitable for people age 12 plus. They are all available um, to watch afterwards or watch them live, including the one at RAL um, on the 17th of December, just before we launch. Um, so I've put the link up there and NASA have started a blog for the launch, um, so you can get all the latest information about what's ha actually happening with JWST from the NASA blog. And there's a nice um, introduction to the mission and some more details to what I've said available from the ESA web pages. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>